I'm Noah from American Trucks, and today let's check out this Barricade HD stubby front bumper with a 20 inch dual row LED light bar for the 19 to 21 Silverado 1500. Now this bumper is an add on to the factory bumper, so it's really going to appeal to that Silverado owner who's looking for a bit more rigidity out of the front end of their truck without committing to a full aftermarket bumper that takes up tons of space and strays farther away from the close to stock look. Like I said before, this is an add-on to the factory bumper, not a replacement. So it does still have some pretty awesome angular styling that you'd often see on full aftermarket bumpers, which is still going to help with approach angle. Now this bumper doesn't require any welding for the installation either. It is completely bolt-on, which is also a big bonus in my opinion. Now this add-on really doesn't only serve a purpose on the trail. This really will aid you on the daily drive as well because here in Pennsylvania, deer are a huge problem and a stubby front bumper is a surefire way to protect the front end of your truck without committing to a full aftermarket bumper. Now I also think it's worth mentioning that this stubby bumper really doesn't even look at a place on a completely stock truck. Since it's so low profile, it looks right at home on an unmodified truck. I really tend to think that big aftermarket bumpers look kind of ridiculous on a stock truck, especially on stock wheels and tires. Then the big draw to this guy in particular is that it features a 20 inch dual row LED light bar that is weather sealed so it's safe for wet environments with a waterproof rating of IP67. It also has a polycarbonate lens that is impact resistant as well. As far as construction goes, of course this guy is going to be made entirely of heavy duty steel plate. So it's gonna withstand quite a beating. Now the steel this is made from is cold pressed, which basically means the temper of the metal isn't lost in heating the steel when they bend it. So this is going to be super hard. Everything here is coated in a two stage finish with an epoxy pre-coat and then a textured black powder coat. Overall, it will serve its purpose to be extremely durable and to protect the front end of your truck. Coming in at $700, you get to see the perks of not buying a full bumper, the cheaper price tag. 700 bucks really isn't bad when you consider what it could cost you if your truck gets damaged. If you're planning on using your truck for truck stuff, it really makes sense to grab something like this stubby front bumper from Barricade. Installing this bumper is a nice and simple job. We're looking at an install time of only about two hours and a difficulty of one out of three wrenches. You should be just fine getting this on yourself, but if you don't have tools or you just don't have time, feel free to use our install connect function right here on the site where we can get you scheduled at a shop local to you and they'll install it so you don't have to. Installs can be intimidating and there really is no shame in leaving it to the professionals. Speaking of install, let's take a closer look at the step-by-step -step process of getting this bumper on our Silverado. For this install, you will need a clip removal tool, a ratchet, T15 Torx bit, 7 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 13, 15, and 18 millimeter sockets, an extension, a swivel adapter, 10 and 13 millimeter wrenches, the provided four millimeter Allen wrench, a depinning tool, angle cutters, an impact, some tape, and zip ties. What's up guys, today we're gonna to be installing a new front bumper, so let's get started. So our first step is going to be remove our upper radiator shroud so we can get to our grill mounts. And to do that, we're first gonna to need to remove our hood latch release handle, and that's being held on by two T15 Torx bolts. So we're gonna use our T15 Torx bit on our ratchet to go ahead and remove those and slide our handle out of the way and set it aside. Now that we have that off, we can go ahead and remove the 10 push pins holding our upper radiator shroud off. And to get those off, we're gonna use our clip removal tool and just pull them all out.
Now we can go ahead and remove our upper radiator shroud and set it aside. Next, we can go ahead and remove the four bolts holding our upper grill mount in place. And to do that, we're gonna use our 10 millimeter socket on our ratchet. So now we can go ahead and pull our grill out, and to do that, we're gonna pull our top section out just a bit to give it some room, and give it a firm pull outward to release it from the tabs holding it in place. And set your grill aside. So for our next step, we're gonna come behind the bumper and remove the two outer supports holding the edges of our bumper in place. And to do that, we're gonna use our 15 millimeter socket and extension on our impact. And once you have that out, you can go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. So for our next step, we're ready to remove our outer bumper. And for that, we're gonna need a second set of hands because this is heavy. And we're gonna use our 13 millimeter and 18 millimeter sockets with a swivel and extension to go ahead and remove our two upper bolts located behind this rubber panel, which we will need to pull back to access. So now that we have our rubber tab pulled back, we can go ahead and remove our 13 millimeter outer bolt and our 18 millimeter inner bolt, and then do the same thing for the other side while your friend supports the bumper as well because it is heavy. So now that we have our upper bolts out, we can go ahead and remove our bottom bumper bracket bolts, which are located up by your tow hooks and frame horns. And for that, we're gonna use our 18 millimeter And now with a second set of hands, we can go ahead and remove our bumper. So now that we have everything uninstalled, we can go ahead and put in our frame brackets. And to do that, we're gonna use our two supplied offset triple bolt plates, a left and a right for each. Now these are marked driver and passenger. And to do that, we're just gonna slide them in place on our bolt holes there, put our bolt plates inside the frame rails and then use two 19 millimeter lock nuts, two flat washers and one 17 millimeter lock nut and flat washer for each side.
Now we can tighten these down using our 19 millimeter socket on our impact for our two outer nuts and our 17 millimeter for our inner nut. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. So next we can go ahead and grab our factory bumper and start disassembling it. And to do that, we're gonna start by removing all the 13 millimeter bolts holding our brackets in place using our 13 millimeter socket on our impact. Next, we can go ahead and remove all of our seven millimeter bolts holding our lower portion of our bumper in place. And to do that, we're gonna use our seven millimeter socket and our ratchet. Now that we have our lower portion of our bumper off, we can go ahead and set that aside. So if your truck came equipped with factory parking sensors, this is now when you would want to extend your harness with the supplied harness extension or fog lights. Go ahead and do the same thing, but ours has neither. So we're just gonna go ahead and reassemble our top half of our bumper. And to do that, we're gonna use the same 13 millimeter bolts and put all our brackets back in place. And then we can go ahead and tighten those back down using our 13 millimeter socket on our impact.
And once you have that done, you can go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. So now we have our new bumper on the table, and since ours doesn't have parking sensors, we're gonna use the provided sensor hole covers. We'll just go ahead and snap those into place. Now we can go ahead and install our fog light insert covers, and for that we're gonna use five combo bolts, which are four millimeter Allen heads, and five 10 millimeter flange nuts. Once you have your tabs lined up, you can go ahead and insert our hardware. And then we're going to tighten those down using our 4 millimeter Allen socket on our ratchet and a 10 millimeter wrench. Some of your bolts are hard to get to, so your kit does come with a provided 4 millimeter Allen wrench. Then you can go ahead and grab a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench and get those hard to reach ones. And once you have those tightened down, you can go ahead and repeat this for the other side. Next, we can go ahead and install our mesh inserts for our fog light covers. And to do that, we're gonna use our two four millimeter Allen bolts and two 10 millimeter flange nuts. And to tighten these down, we'll use our four millimeter Allen socket on our ratchet and a 10 millimeter wrench. And once you're done that, you can go ahead and repeat this for the other side. Next, we can go ahead and install our LED light brackets. You will have one for your left side, one for your right side. And to do that, the bottom mount takes a 13 millimeter bolt, a lock washer, two flat washers, and a 13 millimeter nut. And we're just gonna leave these loosely installed for now till we get our LED light bar in place. Next, we can go ahead and loosely install our LED light bar using two 13 millimeter bolts, lock washer and flat washer.
Now that we've got our light bar in place, we can go ahead and look from the front side of our bumper and make sure we're happy with the lateral placement of our light bar. And then we can go ahead and tighten down our mounting bolts using our 13 millimeter socket on our ratchet and a 13 millimeter wrench. Next, you can go ahead and hold your light bar flush with your grill insert. Go ahead and flip it down. And we're gonna tighten up our two sides, again, using our 13 millimeter socket and our ratchet. Now we can go ahead and install our license plate bracket on the front. And to do that, we're gonna use our two four millimeter Allen bolts, two flat washers, and two lock nuts. So now to tighten these down, we're gonna use our provided four millimeter Allen wrench and our 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Next, we can go ahead and insert our plastic screw tabs. Next, we can go ahead and insert our trim onto our upper portion of our bumper cover here. and then you can trim off any excess you may have. Now this does have a metal insert, so you will need angle cutters to go ahead and trim this. Let's go ahead and line up where it's gonna end, and then just snip it off. Next, we can go ahead and reinstall our factory bumper mount brackets using the factory hardware. Then we can go ahead and tighten those down using our 15 millimeter socket on our impact. And once you've done this, you can go ahead and repeat this on the other side. So now we're ready to go ahead and reinstall our factory bumper. Go on ahead and grab the second set of hands so we can install our top two factory 18 millimeter bolts. Now that we have our bumper in place, we can install our two 18 millimeter bolts. Then we can tighten those down using our 18 millimeter socket on our impact. Then you can go ahead and reinsert your rubber pieces covering your hardware. Next, we can go ahead and reinstall our two inner support bolts. And then tighten them down using our 18 millimeter socket on our ratchet. And then go ahead and do the same thing for the other one. Next, we can go ahead and reinstall our outer bumper support brackets using our factory three 15 millimeter bolts.
Then we can tighten those down using our 15 millimeter socket on our impact. Then you can go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. So now we're ready to install our new bumper. And to do that, we're gonna grab our triple nut plate and go ahead and slide that inside of our lower mounting bracket and go ahead and use our supplied 18 millimeter bolts, lock washers and flat washers and go ahead and bolt this bumper on. So now we can go ahead and slide our triple nut plates into place and go ahead and set our bumper in. And for that, I've grabbed a second pair of hands just to make things easier. And we'll go ahead and set those in and use the 18 millimeter bolts, lock washers and flat washers. So now after you and your buddy have had your bumper set in place and you're happy with the fitment, you can go ahead and tighten all your bolts down using an 18 millimeter socket and swivel adapter with an extension on your impact. So now we're back here under the driver's side frame rail. We're on the outside of the frame horn and we're gonna go ahead and tighten down our bolts. Once you have that done, you can go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. So now we can go ahead and install our lower wing pieces. And to do that, we're gonna use two four millimeter Allen bolts with lock washers and flat washers, 10 millimeter flange nuts, and then two hex bolts and two flange nuts with a flat washer for the inner portion. So to tighten our bolts down, we're gonna use our supplied four millimeter Allen wrench and a ratcheting 10 millimeter wrench for our outer bolts. So now to tighten our inner bolt down, we're gonna use our 13 millimeter socket and an extension on our ratchet, as well as a 13 millimeter wrench. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. So now that we've got the bumper in place, before we put our grill back on, it's a good idea to go ahead and do the wiring for our LED light strip. And for that, we've come up to our battery and we're gonna go ahead and connect our positive and negative terminals to our battery for our lighting. So for our positive terminal, we will be using a 13 millimeter socket on our ratchet to remove the nut. We can go ahead and attach our positive ring terminal. Then we can go ahead and tighten that back down. Again, using our 13 millimeter socket and our ratchet. And now for our negative terminal, we will use our 10 millimeter socket on our ratchet. Go ahead and remove the nut. And 
Now we can install our negative ring terminal. Now we can go ahead and tighten back down our nut. So your relay does come with a little mounting tab for a screw and since ours isn't going to be permanent we're not actually going to mount it but you can mount it to this soft portion of your battery tray or somewhere else that you find suitable around the area and go ahead and clean up the look however you'd like. So next we can go ahead and drop our LED strip connector down through to the bottom of our bumper to go ahead and make the connection. There is a nice little gap right here behind the headlight. You can see light. And just go ahead and fish it down through there. So once you have that drop down through and you can grab it from the bottom of the vehicle, you can go ahead and grab your strip connector and go ahead and make your connection here. And then your kit comes with zip ties. You can tuck it up out of the way and clean up the look. So the tricky part is gonna be how to get your switch through your firewall. And to do that, we found it's easy just to go ahead and deep in this connector and send it through where our hood latch cable is and just go next to that grommet. So we're gonna deep in the three terminals in this connector tape them together, send it up through the firewall, and go ahead and repin them and make our connection. And then we'll tape these ends together and send it up through. So now we can go ahead and locate our hood latch release cable, which is up behind your brake pedal and to the left, and go ahead and pop that little grommet out it's a plastic grommet and then we can go ahead and feed our connector wire through out into the firewall and go ahead and reestablish a connection. So this part is gonna be really hard to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do it and we're gonna meet you back on the front side of the truck and kind of show you where it came from. So once you have your wires coming through your firewall, you can go ahead and grab them and they should come out right by your brake master cylinder and we can go ahead and repin our connector and to do that we're going to go ahead and match it up the correct wire side of our other end here so it'll be yellow red and black for ours And you should hear a small click when you have them back into place. You can go ahead and give them a, a small tug just to make sure they're set. Now that we have those repinned, we can go ahead and plug back in our connector. And again, ours isn't going to be a permanent, but you can route this however you'd like. Just make sure you're out of the way of any moving parts of your engine your belts, your fans, anything like that, and you can go ahead and tuck them up out of the way as you see fit. So now that we've got our wires through our firewall and our connection is made, we can go ahead and stick our switch wherever you would like to put it. It does come with a 3M uh, adhesive backing, and we're just gonna put ours right here under our parking brake switch. But you can mount it wherever you want to. That's just where we're gonna do it. So now we can go ahead and reattach our grill and to do that, we're simply going to line it back up with the tabs. Make sure they're all in place. And then we can go ahead and put our four 10 millimeter bolts back in the top. 
So now we can go ahead and put our four 10 millimeter bolts back in the top of our grill using our 10 millimeter socket and our ratchet. Next, we can place our upper shroud back into place. Then we can go ahead and reinsert our 10 push pin clips. And lastly, we can go ahead and reinstall our hood latch release handle. Go ahead and slide that into place. And reinstall our two T15 Torx bolts using our T15 Torx bit on our ratchet. Alrighty guys, that about wraps up our review and install of our Barricade HD stubby front bumper with 20 inch dual row LED light bar for your 19 to 21 Silverado 1500. Thank you for watching and as always for everything Silverado, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.